What are some good ways to stay centered? Well, as Jocko Willink, W-I-L-L-I-N-K, Jade, keeps misspelling his name. That's what Google's Cap for. cut. Yeah, it's like I, I keep seeing these reels and I'm like, what the fuck? She's misspell it again. And she has caught it. So what is that? They got to do Don't a better. call part. her out. I'm going to call her out. So Jocko Willink says discipline equals freedom. And so what's going to help you to stay centered is, number one, reading the book 10 to 15 times so you know what a centered man looks like, what the behaviors are, and what behaviors that you've been doing that are really unattractive and uncentered so you can knock those, you know, cut those out. Because if you, you know, guys that struggle are dudes that cherry pick the videos or they read the book once or twice and then they start getting laid a bunch and they go, oh, I got this. I don't need to read the damn book. I, you know, I sold my company for $200 million. I'm, what, what does Corey think he knows? I, I'm really smart. I only need to read it once or twice. And then six months later, a year later, they're in panic on a phone session with me trying to, you know, save a relationship. And when they start telling me what they were doing and saying, I was like, bro, this is right out of the book, man. You're literally doing the opposite of what the book teaches. And they don't even realize it because they never really took the time to read it. And they maybe just thumb through it a few times. So you got to learn the material because you got to learn what behaviors are masculine and attractive and what behaviors are not. So you have awareness of it. And then if you have awareness of it, then you can practice it. And also dating enough women to where you apply the things that are in the book and you see it show up in your life. And because when, you, when you're reading something and then you're seeing it show up in the real world, <coughs> you're going to continue to get better. And as you get better, repetition is the mother of skill. So it's just going to take time and repetition to master what's in the books. You, you have to interact with and meet enough women. Plus, you can observe it in other people as well. And so when you see the same patterns over and over and over and over again in other human beings, especially other men and women interacting, and you can point it out, you can go, oh, that guy's a bitch. He's like, oh, she wears the pants in the family. And like, oh, look at her. She's walking 10 feet in front of her husband. Like, she don't even give a fuck about him. And you see those things. It's, you know, you can see, and then you can see women that are holding hands. They're very happy. They're doting on the guy. They're all over him. And you can go, that guy gets it. And so when you see that over and over, then you're, it's like, kind of seeing the code of the matrix you're able to tell who's got it and who doesn't and just having an understanding and knowledge of it will help you be disciplined and, and plus you got to apply it you, you can't read the book a hundred times and then never talk to a girl or go out on a date and think you're going to get better it, it's it requires you to participate in your own rescue You've got to practice the things that are in the book, but you got to learn what's in the book and practice it at the same time. And guys that run into trouble read the book once or twice, or they read it four or five times and then they start dating and they don't go back to the book at all. And then two years later, they're in a relationship. And then when they start telling me what they're doing and saying with the girl that they're having problems with, it's like, you're literally acting the opposite of the way the book is. And because they never really took the time to read it the 10 to 15 times and the students that do really well tend to go back to the book at least once or twice a year, even if they maybe read it 15 times five years ago, just because you got to refresh it. Cause you can remember whatever you observe, you participate in. And so if you're constantly watching TV and constantly watching movies, you're constantly getting propagandized with dysfunctional archetypes of how men and women should interact. And if it's been years since you went back to the book and you're constantly consuming the same dysfunctional archetypes well eventually you'll fall back asleep and you'll start behaving the way you see on tv and you won't even realize that you're doing it one thing about the walking because you always talk about like women walking like fast what if like they're just new york walkers you walk side by side yeah but like sometimes people walk slow and like i'm a fast walker like, I can't stand if I'm, like, walking with a group of people and, like, there's, like, one person that's, like, lingering all the way in the back and they walk so slow. If a woman loves and respects her man, she's going to be not the talk- side. If she doesn't, she's going to be walking ahead usually, and that's what you see. Mm-hmm. The woman's always slightly ahead as they walk down the street because she's the one who runs a relationship. No. You see it all the time. You can just go out on the street and watch people. 
and you can tell who's in control. And most of the time, it's the women that are running things, and the guy's just kind of going along. Because she's the leader in the relationship. I don't know about that. That's a fact of life, boss girl. Mm. Because even if you think I'm full of shit, just go sit down in a park sometime. Or the mall, especially, and watch the couples. And you can always tell who who is in control of the relationship because they're always going to be slightly ahead. And the men that have it together are slightly ahead or they're walking side by side holding hands with their girl. Well, at the mall. Never behind. At the mall, the men are always carrying the women's shopping bags. So it's it's very likely that they are going to be walking slower because they have a lot of baggage that they're holding. The real men are carrying some of the shopping bags and she's carrying some of them. He's not loaded up with the gentlemen. Bags she's just got her purse. The gentlemen are carrying all the shopping bags. The beta males are carrying all the shopping bags. I don't know bags. about that. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Well, you don't have a microphone, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for... He doesn't let me carry anything, Exactly. Corey. A real man should not be letting a woman carry things. It's a team effort. Just like he shouldn't let a woman walk on, like, the street side of the sidewalk. That's true. That's the gentlemanly thing. Exactly. But there's nothing wrong with a woman carrying some of her own shit. Especially... If, if she wants to. bought a lot of things. If she wants to. You want to be a dude with 15 bags and, and you know, and you're barely struggling to carry them. And she's mean? just walking with her purse. It's like, that's rude. Of course she's going to carry a couple of things. That's what I'm talking about. But you're going to be carrying the majority of it. If it's a big giant bag and it's heavy, you're, the guy's going to probably be carrying it. But Caroline. if it's clothes and shopping and stuff like that. See? Thank you. Thank you. Caroline and I are on the same page with this. You lost. Whatever. Just go to the mall. You're going to be slowly people. walking behind her because you're going to have way more shit in your hands. Nope. It's just how it works. Nope. Right That's because you're like boss girl and you run things just like Caroline runs things in her relationship. We're just going to be way more excited to go to the next store. That's really what it is. We're just... Oh! Cartier? Chanel? Tiffany's? Yeah. That's just how it works. Next question. 